Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and you're looking at an unusual object known as a pulsar. But this is not just a pulsar, this is actually pulsar and something else. Today we're going to take a look at these unusual, unique objects that have binary pulsars or binary neutron stars in them, and we're going to explore them in Space Engine. We're going to go on a trip from Earth and discover what these objects are hiding. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And we're going to start our adventure right here on Earth. We're going to just escape Earth and go to a distance of about 26,000 light years away. Now, uh, there's actually at least a few um, binary neutron stars we discovered and at least one uh, confirmed binary pulsar. But we're going to start with an object that was discovered back in 1974 by the um, actually two famous physicists, Russell Hulse and Joseph Taylor. And they won a Nobel Prize for discovering and confirming uh, these two objects. And these unofficially are known as Hulse-Taylor pulsars or Hulse-Taylor Hulse neutron stars. They do have a more official name though, and it's actually PSR B1913 six plus 16, and it's located right in this direction at a distance of 23 and a quarter light years away from us. So let's go there. Let's go check it out. And this is going to be our first binary neutron star system we're going to take a look at. So as you can see, we have to go to a very, very, very far away distance. A lot farther away than you can imagine. So right here, at this particular location in space, these two scientists heard an unusual uh, pulsar noise coming that didn't seem to make sense. Sometimes it would change um, its pulses from a few milliseconds to a few milliseconds longer or shorter. And they realized that something was actually changing uh, this particular pulsar and something was affecting it. And they realized there was another neutron star orbiting around it. Now, this here is currently considered to be just a neutron star. And it's very likely a pulsar as well, but it's just actually pointing to a different direction. So we're not receiving its pulses. So this is the uh, PSR B1913 uh, A. And the other object known as B is the actual pulsar we are receiving. And we're going to take a look at it as well by leaving this particular star and maybe actually slowing down time just a little bit and taking a look at the other object that it's orbiting, which is right there, the blue one. So this is where we're going to go take a look at because it's actually the pulsar we are uh, detecting from our planet Earth. Now, these guys used um, a very interesting 305 meter antenna uh, known as Arecibo, to discover this particular pulsar. And uh, this neutron star, uh, this pulsar, rotates on its axis 17 times per second. So if I slow down time, this is 17 times per second. And you can kind of see the um, accretion disk here represents the actual pulsar. So even if I slow down time quite dramatically, you'll see that it's still spinning really, really, really fast. It's a very fast spinning pulsar. And uh, so the pulse period here is about 59 milliseconds. And using uh, this pulsar, they were able to actually even determine the orbit or the orbital parameters of these two objects, um, realizing that occasionally the pulses from this pulsar arrive three seconds earlier and sometimes they uh, come back at normal time. And this led them to believe that these two pulsars um, orbit around each other at a three light second orbit. In other words, it's a distance of approximately two thirds of the diameter of our sun or this number right here, just over 1 million kilometers. So this is their orbit and this is how they move around each other. And we can even try to land on this pulsar, but nothing good will probably happen out of it because things might start spinning really fast. As you uh, may know from previous videos, pulsars have such a strong gravitational field and they're so dense that they actually warp space around them and this one creates this very unusual blue shift effect if you actually stand on the surface here but obviously that's not a great idea very bad for your health you'll probably die horribly and miserably if you ever do that but another interesting discovery about these two pulsars over the years 
is that um, they seem to be getting closer and closer. And this is actually very important. This is in relation to the uh, so-called gravitational theory, uh, gravitational wave theory that was proposed by Einstein like a hundred years ago. And we were able to kind of um, officially show it when two black holes collided a few years ago and we were able to detect that. And um, the detection of those gravitational waves and the collision of black holes showed us that when two massive objects, specifically two objects that are actually relatively dense as well, orbit around one another, let's make them orbit around one another, um, they create quite a lot of gravitational waves. So it, with every single orbit, there's these ripples of space-time that go around space. And we actually can totally detect them back on Earth, and these two pulsars, or these two neutron stars, allow us to study those, pulse, uh, those gravitational ripples. Um, but on top of the actual space-time ripples, what these two, um, black, uh, not black holes, these two neutron stars do to each other is that because of those space-time ripples, they also kind of slow down um, with time. They basically, the ripples, the space-time ripples, slowly decrease the orbital velocity, making these two objects come closer and closer to each other with every single spin. And after about 300 million years, they will actually collide and merge and become one large neutron star and possibly even create some sort of a super object, maybe even an unusual supernova. So this is uh, the first object I wanted to take a look at, these two very famous objects known as Taylor Halsey neutron stars or pulsars. And now let's take a look at the, the actual official two pulsars we've discovered uh, a few years ago, known as PSR J0737-3039A. Doesn't have a better name, unfortunately, but as you can see, there's two objects here. And we're going to go ahead and jump to uh, the first one. And we're going to take a look at it from a bit of a distance here. Now, this is about three and a half thousand light years away from Earth. And this is the first official binary pulsar system we've discovered. Uh, this system is also very interesting, but because it's a little bit closer to Earth and because it's actually pulsars, they basically both pulse toward us, we can study so much more with them. And the most interesting thing about these two is that they occasionally kind of eclipse each other. So let me try to simulate that. It's blinking a little bit too much. All right, can't seem to change the blinking part, but they are pulsars after all, so they have to pulse. So yeah, occasionally they will actually hide each other. They will kind of eclipse each other and we're able to use um, the eclipses or the magnetic field eclipses in this case. Basically, it's because of the very, very strong magnetic field around them that they kind of bend the light from each other. We're able to kind of study them in uh, in detail and the magnetic field from one of the pulsars basically blocks the companion's um, light or its actual pulsations and this blockage can last up to about 30 seconds and so this by itself is actually quite incredible and will definitely allow us to study and discover some really really cool effects about pulsars that we probably have not really known about before so this is a very unique system in itself but the other interesting discovery about these two is that their mass is actually very similar to what it used to be when they were created. So this one here is about 2.5 masses of sun, and this one here is about 1.4 masses of sun. And it, we believe that they actually have not changed at all since their creation. In other words, these two pulsars were actually created not through supernova like you would expect them to. They were created through just some kind of a collapse. Now, very recently, there was actually a paper that was published that discovered that about 30% of all of the black holes are created without the actual supernova. So in other words, supernova don't happen as often as we think they do. And these two pulsars show us that not only does it not happen to black holes, but it doesn't seem to even happen to neutron stars. So there is something that we're not sure about just yet when it comes to creation of these objects such as black holes, neutron stars, and white dwarfs. Okay, not white dwarfs, but uh, definitely neutron stars and 
uh, black holes. So even though we originally thought that they are created with essentially a very large supernova that um, collapses the star into the remainder, which becomes a neutron star, um, these two indicate that they were created just from the collapse no supernova needed and we definitely need to study and find out more about how how they were made and what exact exactly happened to them and why some stars go through supernova and some don't so these are very very unique systems that will help us discover more about our universe and so well that's really all, all i wanted to show you in this video i just wanted to show you these very unusual objects that are, are out there specifically these very unique binary neutron stars and in this case two very unique pulsars i'm sorry for all the blinking i hope it didn't just cause you any trouble when you're watching this but anyway we're going to finish this video by basically escaping the system and going for a bit of a fly through the rest of the galaxy and make sure to come back tomorrow to learn something else and to watch another video i'll see you guys tomorrow thank you so much for watching for all your support space out and as always Bye-bye.